Potassium cyanide is the most popular poison in existence and today I will try to make some of it because despite being extremely toxic it is very useful in chemistry. I could use the potassium cyanide to extract gold or for various organic preparations like making nitriles. My reason for making cyanide is however a very different one. Cyanide is one of those reagents that are great to have and besides that I am going to showcase a method that has never been shown on YouTube before, which I think is great. It is also the historical preparation of potassium cyanide and therefore we will be reliving history today. But before beginning I have to warn you though, cyanide can easily kill you if you don't handle it correctly. Never try any of this at home and now you can enjoy the video without poisoning yourself. What's great about this method is that I only need to use two chemicals and both are easily available and cheap. The first chemical I used is potassium ferrocyanide which is this yellow salt. There's also potassium ferricyanide which is red, but I'm not gonna use that. The second chemical I'm gonna use is methanol which is necessary for the purification. I found that the best type of container for this reaction is a butane bottle made from iron. container is going to get destroyed during the process and to me it is therefore important that besides being chemically resistant it is cheap. I weighed out 250 grams of potassium ferrocyanide trihydrate which should be more than enough. The reagents may be cheap but for this reaction I absolutely need to use an electric furnace which is not cheap. Despite having excellent ventilation, I am not going to run this reaction inside, but will take it outside. I set the furnace to 300 degrees Celsius at first, because we need to get rid of the water. This will turn the ferrocyanide trihydrate into ferrocyanide without any water. Once dry, I set it to 750 degrees Celsius, and now you can see something happening. It's turning black. I set it to 900 degrees way too quickly, and soon it overbubbled, messing up my entire furnace. The product could still be isolated from this, but as I want to determine the yield, I am going to try again. As I didn't have an empty gas bottle, I discharged this full one and I'm gonna keep the gas, I'm not gonna waste it. Please don't explode. <sighs> Unlike last time, there's a lot of empty space in the container and it should not overflow. I heated it up more slowly as well, maxing it out at 900 degrees. It looked really promising. I only need to get the solid block out of the container. I put it into plastic bags and hit it with a hammer. Until I discovered this. This is unreacted ferrocyanate, which never happened to me before. So I got more cans and tried it again. This time I got full conversion and not any of those white parts. Okay, besides potassium cyanide, this reaction also generates iron carbide and nitrogen gas. The iron carbide makes this look black. And how do I get the cyanide out of it? As it turns out, the best option is wood alcohol, because it dissolves cyanide rather well, while not dissolving iron carbide at all. To extract, I filled the black death powder into a soxid extractor with a cotton ball stuck to the bottom. Instead of methanol, it is possible to use ethanol, but it needs to be anhydrous, as otherwise some of the product will get destroyed. As the solubility of cyanide in ethanol is much lower, the extraction is going to take longer as well. Methanol is condensed and when it reaches a certain level, it gets drained back into the flask. This cycle repeats and the cyanide is extracted. 12 hours in, I stopped the extraction and I am left with this grey slurry. I'm kinda disappointed in how it looks. The last time I tried this, it looked clean. For this reason, I'm going to do another extraction because it is important that the product looks nice. No matter how pure a product looks, to me it seems like a reaction works better when the product looks pure, no matter how pure it actually is. To avoid too much air getting into the apparatus while still allowing for pressure compensation, I connected this glove to the top of the apparatus. 
Three hours in, all of the cyanide had been extracted and what was left in the flask looked cleaner than before. I filtered off the highly toxic potassium cyanide using a vacuum filtration, rinsed the flask using the yellow methanol which I filtered off and filtered it off again. I transferred the product to a flask. It contains a fair amount of methanol which needs to be removed. Therefore I set up a water bath, connected the vacuum and turned on the heat. And there you have it, white and dry, highly toxic potassium cyanide. To determine the yields I put it into a pre-weight storage bottle and unfortunately this happened. After carefully cleaning up the powdered duff, I put the rest into the bottle. The glassware still contains cyanide and therefore I need to decontaminate it. Destroying the cyanide is easy. I only need to oxidize the cyanide ions in whatever possible way. I chose to use sodium dichloride as cyanurate because it's the cheapest, but hydrogen peroxide also works. And there it is, potassium cyanide. I ended up getting 104.3 grams of cyanides, which is actually kind of good. This is an 85% yield and I'm happy with this. I now got about 260 grams of cyanide in total. It's gonna last me years. This is copper sulfate, which I dissolved in water. It reacts with cyanide to form copper cyanide and dicyanogen, which is a gas that escapes. Don't try this at home, dicyanogen is about as toxic as hydrogen cyanide. I hope you enjoyed this video. At the end of it, I would like to thank everyone who helped me make it. If you want to become a Patreon too, feel free to check the link in the description.